And now we're on to Hafiyud Dalit Ovid Beis. I can understand that if Beit Shammai would notify Beit Hillel, watch out for these Caleb, according to your sheet of these Caleb, it's Mayim. Now we understand why Beit Hillel were not inhibited about using Caleb and barring Caleb for Beit Shammai. They, if there was no notification to the contrary, they assumed they would tell him, according to Beit Hillel chief as well. If there was no notification process, if Beit Shammai didn't warn Beit Hillel up front, his ambition of Beit Shammai I can understand why there was no compunction, no inhibition about Beit Shammai barring from Beit Shammai, because it was always Beit Shammai who were the, make, the machmirim, they were metame where Beit Shammai was metire. Titmos, the Beit Shammai, the Beit Shammai to Horestinu, because even though Beit Shammai in certain situations were machmir, more than Beit Shammai, in Tum Vitaro. But any Kalim that were Tahorim according to Basilil were certainly Tahorim according to Beit Shammai. So again, I, I think I may, may have, uh, I don't know if I formulated precisely, but Basilil were the ones who were Machmir in Tum Vitaro. Ela Basil me Beit Shammai, Bamalo Nimnu Hare Taros, the Beit Shammai, the Basil Tmeos Nimnu. Beis Shammai would make Kilim, they would retire Kilim, which in the view of Beis Hillel would have been Tmeim. So how could it be that Beis Hillel would borrow Kilim freely, without compunction, from Beis Shammai? In love, we have no choice. By process of elimination, we must establish that the mode lahu, that Beis Shammai would always send a notification to Beis Hillel, warning them in advance that the following Kilim that we're sending over to you if you want to borrow them, you're in trouble because they are Tmeim. Treat them as Kalim Tmeim because according to your sheet of Basil, they in fact are Tmeim. According to our sheet of the Tahorah. And this is the fi- final conclusion. Okay, so now we're on Daf Yudalin Omid Beis. And I, I'm not sure if the couple knows this, so I'm just going to reiterate that on Sunday we have a schedule we start at 8 because I have a class to give elsewhere. Okay, fine. So we're up to Umay Ume. Let's just note where we got up to here. It's seven lines down from the top. Umay Ume da hach me hach. What is bothering the Gemara now? We're saying that Beit Shammai would notify Beit Hillel, and therefore Beit Hillel were not inhibited about using taros in these caliphs. Now, we could have said that lo nimnu mi lisa ni nashim elu me elu, right? In that case also, there's a pressing need for notifying it. So it's interesting that when you wanted to prove that Beis Shammai would notify Beis Hill that this boy or girl, according to your sheet of Beis Hill, with Mamzerim, we could only prove it from Tumah Vitara, that Beis Shammai would send Kalim to Beis Hill and apparently notify them. But why do we need that? Why not just say that in... Yibum, they were notifying one to the other. So the Gemara wants to know why the clincher here is Taros. The Gemara explains, Mao de Tema. I would have said that, you know what? Okay, Beis Hillel <clears throat> would marry women from the families of Beit Shammai. That doesn't prove that Beit Shammai notified them. But rather, Sora Kola Isla the word would have gotten out to become public knowledge that Atsaris Erva got married to Yavama, to, to uh, Yavama. And that's why Beis Hillel were not inhibited about marrying the children, the offspring of Beit Shammai, because they knew that if there was an issue of Atsaris Erva, they would have heard about it. It was public knowledge. There was a voice. There was a call. There was a rumor that circulated. But it doesn't mean that Beit Shammai, every time one of their descendants or disciples' descendants would get married to somebody from Beit Hillel's camp, 
that they would notify them. Hamash Malang, in the case of Kalim, there's no public knowledge about the fact that these Kalim acquired Tumah, were contaminated, again, contaminated according to Beis Hillel. It must be that if Beis Hillel would, without hesitation, borrow Kalim from Beis Shammai, it must be that Beis Shammai would have to have notified them. There was no other source of knowledge. And once we have that, we're going to apply that modim lahem to the case of Tzarasar. Gufa, Om Rabbi Lazar Afal, Pichanech, Gubei Cham, Bei Silvet, Tzaros, modim she'ein mamzer elamisha isuro isur erev avyanach karos. Right, we learned before in the name of Rabbi Lazar that there's a machlok to Shem Bei Silvet, Cham, Bei Bad Tzaros, Erev. Is she chayav in Yibum? Or is she p'tur from Yibum? But everybody agrees that there's no mamzeres from the next generation, the Bnei Atzaros. Why? Because there's no mamzeres unless it's an Isukaris. So immediately the Gemara asks, what, what, what are you talking about? Man moded. Who, who's moded to whom over here about the children of the Bnei Atzaros? If you're talking about Beis Hill being moded to Beis Hill, Beis Chamei being moded to Beis Hill, that it's Tzaras Erva does not require Chalitza. So in the worst case scenario, that's an Easter of Losia and Eish Samisha Chutzelisa, which is called Yevamal Ashuk, and that's only a lav. And the children from Alav certainly are not Mamzerim. So what, what, are you, what are you telling me, Lefisha? Ain Mamzer, Elohim, Misha, Anush, Kares. We're talking about, oh, Yavam, Lashuk. That's not a Chiv, Kares. Ela, we have no choice. But it's based Hillel, Levei, Shama. What Rabbi Loz had in mind was that even though Beis Hill pro- forbid Saras, Erva in Yibum, nevertheless, they are moded to be Chamai that if there was a Yibum, then the child is not a Mamsa. What does that mean? He goofa chayve krisis then. How can you tell me the child is not a Mamsa? Tsaris Erva is an Erva with a Chiv Karitz. And if Beis Hill would allow the Chi Possum, the Tsaris Erva to have Yibum, then the child of that. Marriage is certainly a monster, according to Basil, because we're talking about Chayve, Krisus. The Olam, the Gemara says, what does Rabbi Luz have in mind? Let's go back and say, Beit Shammai le Beit Hillel. Ah, you'll ask me if it's Beit Shammai le Beit Hillel, then we're talking about a woman, namely a Tzara Serva, who went and got married to someone else without getting Chalitza. That's Chayve Lavin. And the Gemara says, "Lafuki mit Rabbi Kiva, the Yomi Yesh Mamzer, Michayve Lavim." According to the sheet of Rabbi Akiva, there is Mamzeris from a violation of Chayve Lavim, and that's the Chiddush here. Kamash Malon, the Ain Mamzer Michayve Lavim, that we don't ask him, we don't accept Rabbi Akiva, we side with the Chachamim, and Mamzeris is only generated by a Chiv Kares but not by a violation of a Chiyuv Lav. So when the Tsaras Erva would get married without Chalitza, based on the Shita Beis Hillel, there would be, according to Beis Shammai, a violation of Tia Eish, Zamei Safut Zizar, and that's only a violation of a Lav. But nevertheless, there's no Mamzerus, because Ein Mamzer Ella Mi Isure Karis. Now we get back to Rav and Reish Lokit, Shmuel, Rav Yochanan, whether Asu Beit Shammai could do very well, low Asu could do very well. Toshma. Afal Pishan Echiku Beit Shammai Beit Shil Bet Soros, meaning it's Aras Erva, whether she's Chayv and Yibum or not. Be Achayos, with regard to Achayos, and we get Yoshon, and the Sofik Eishesish, and the Megar Eishesish, the Voloni Mom of Kutiki, we'll go through every case. And the Kesa Veshava Kesa, Pruta Veshava Pruta. Nevertheless, in all these Machlokasin, Lo Nimnu, Beit Shammai, Mi Lisa, Noshim, Mi Beis Hillel, Velo Beis Hillel, Mi Beit Shammai, Lamducha Shechiba, Vereus, 
No, give us a bazel kaimash and emera emes fashol neho. So, number one, we have a machlokes later on in Afchavavam and Aleph to Chimbe Silbe Chamai regarding Achios. What's the case of Achios? We're talking about four brothers, two of whom were married to two sisters. You have Ruben Shimon, Levi, and Yehuda. Ruben and Shimon are married to Rach and Leah, who are two sisters. And now both Reuben and Shimon die without children. And Rach and Leah fall for Yibum to the two other brothers. That's Yehuda, Levi, and Yehuda. And we're going to have Machlokes with regard to these two Achios, Rachel and Leah. The halacha is Cholzos below Messiabos. And that's called Zkuka Lishnei Achen. Meaning both Rachel and Leah now fall for Yibam to each one of the brothers. So you have two sisters falling for Yibam. There's a double Zika of two sisters. And that's called Achos Zikukasa. And the Chachomim said that Achos Zikukasa is Osir, and she has the same status as Achos Ishto, meaning the Zika is like a partial Ishus. Now, if they violated that Isa Drabanon, and they went ahead and they were Miyab named the two sisters of Rachel and Leah, if they already married them, then the Rabbana are not going to go that far and say, we have to break up the marriage. That we won't do. Again, because Achos Kukasu is only the Rabbana. Basil Omrim, after the Eved, Yotziu Oson. We're going to force them to divorce. Then we have Machlokas in Get Yosha. That means bet- between the, the writing of the Get, and the delivery of the get into the hands of the Isha, the Baal had a yichud. He was alone privately with his wife. And Beit Shammai say that you can use the get. And Basil says, no, the very fact that he had a yichud and he was alone in a private place with his wife after writing the get, that constitutes a kind of undermining of the get. Why? Why doesn't Beit Hillel recognized the get. And the answer is because Gzeira Shemitis Aber Mimeno Bismana Zev Yomusha get Konim Li Buro. Maybe she'll get pregnant if they're alone in that room. And they're going to say that the get came before they violated this Avera. So that's Machlok Shim Beis Hillel. And Beit Shama. Beit Shama have no compunctions about allowing the use of the get, and Beit Shama's worried that people are going to say that the get came before the Avera. They also argue in the case of the suffocatious each. And this has to do with the case of Ishus de Rabbana, rabbinic Ishus, that means when a young girl is married off by her mother or by her brothers, this marriage does not require get to break up the marriage. All it requires is mirun. And the ktana can give mirun, and that's called a suffix each. We always have a suffix, maybe she'll be mamayin. And if she does me and it's okay, then it's suing Lama Freya. And on Daf Kuzayim, we're going to have Machlok Shim Beis Silbe Chamai about the laws of Miun in the case of a Ketana. The Garish is Ishta Volonim of a Pundaki. Beis Chamai hold that the get is still valid. They still say no. That if they were alone together after the writing of the get, then that's considered a bitter like get. And why is that considered a bit like get? Because ain't no the most of be lost of be nus. And obviously he doesn't want to get if he wants to have relations with his wife. Then we have Machlok Sve Silbe Chamev at the Shear of Kesef. According to Beis Shamai, the minimum Shear of Kesef has got to be a dinar. Whereas According to Basil, it's enough, it's a pruta, shove a pruta, that's sufficient.
So again, we have all these cases in which there are Yisru Arayas that are that are dependent upon these machlokas, and yet Beit Shammai did not uh, did not abstain from marrying women from Basil and vice versa. And the Gemara now talks about the Pesuk in Zechariah Emes Vachsholem Ehov. I'm saying that the word Emes is a an allusion to Beit Shammai, and Shalom is an allusion to Beit Silel. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Nimnu Hein Min Avadai Vlo Nimnu Min Now, what we understand now at this point from Rabbi Shimon is that in a case where there was a Vadai, let's say, for example, the Tsaris Erva. So the daughter from Tsaris Erva is certainly a mom's, and we know that she's a mom's according to Beit Silel. Or, for example, in the case of a Tzara Sever who did not receive Chalitz and she got married to someone in a Shuk, according to Beit Shammai, she's not allowed to marry anyone in a Shuk. But nevertheless, there was no inhibition, and they allowed these women to get married one from the other. And that's a case of Suffolk. Says Rabbi Shimon, that's only the case of Suffolk. For example, a woman got a divorce from her husband, and then we find that the husband and the wife, with his ex, they're alone in a pundaki, and he didn't give her a second get. In such a case of suffolk, even Basil would agree that we're not going to apply the Isar Eshesichi of Batoris Bada. It's a suffolk. Maybe he did have relations with her, maybe he didn't, maybe he had relations with Shem Kedusha, maybe he didn't. So therefore, in such cases, Basilel is not inhibited about marrying into such a family. So the Gemara says the following. Now we can prove that Asu kid divreya. He amrit bishlema Asu. Eichamai continued to allow Eitzaris Erva to have Ibum. Mishum hachi nimdu. Now we know why in the case of Vadai, the way Reb Shimon had formulated, Basilel would not marry one of the daughters of Eichamai. Because they were psulus l'kol, according to Basil. El i'amet lo asu, amay nimnu. Well, what's this whole thing about? If it was vaday, then they wouldn't uh, allow themselves. They were inhibited from marrying into the family of Beit Shammai. So the Gemara rejects. With Tizbara, how are you going to explain the reason why, in the case of vaday, they, Basil, were inhibited? Even if I grant you the way that you want to derive from Shimon that uh, if Beit Shammai would continue to do what they did, we would mechalik between Suffolk and Vadai, especially with Basil Nimnu with Beit Shammai. In the case of Vadai, we can justify why Basil would not marry into the families of Beit Shammai because Chayvei Krizitz Nimnu, because According to the sheet of Basilel, as we said over and over again, the Tsaris erva is, a, is an erva of Chayvi Krisis. And the child is Mamzerim, Mamzerim, Hamlet Basil. El of Echamaya, my Nimnula Basilel, me Basilel, Chayvi Laden, and Sharon in according to Basilel. The Tsaris ever goes out without Chalitza, and if she is, according to Bechamaya, you've Hamlet Shuk with an Isola of Losia Echamay Sachutz Lizar, that doesn't generate Mamzerus, Sharon in it. So what's this whole business in Rab Shimon's frame of reference of lo nimnu beit shamai mi lisa not shebeisil? What's that all about? I mean, what was the habamina that could be an issue? Marantas kide omar Rab Machmer He comes along and sheds a new light on Rab Shimon ben Gamliel later on in Daf Tesva. Lo nitzchah litzara atzma. Achenami lo nitzchah. When it says that Beit Shammai were inhibited about marrying women for Beit Hillel, that's a case of Tzara Atzma. If she herself did not receive Chalitza, then she's a Yivam Lashuk. So it means vis-a-vis the Tzara, that's not an issue because the child, children from the Tzara are certainly not Mamzerin. 
But as far as, far as the, that Sora who was an erva, and she didn't receive chalitza, I'm sorry, my mistake. Let, let's go over it one more time. Lo nitzcha el litzara atzma. So we have Rachel and Leah. As far as any children from Leah are concerned, if Leah got married based on Basil's psaq without chalitza, that's Pasha. The children from such a marriage are kshir. But with regard to Rachel herself, again, I, keep, I, I make, I, sometimes I mix up Rachel and Leah. But what I mean is, if Rachel is an Arab, What's the status of Leah? Leah is at Saras Erev. According to Basilel, she can get married free without Chalitza. And Basilel, what Nimnu, meaning they would be inhibited about allowing anyone from them to get married to the Saras Erev, because the Saras Erev is a Yavam The Gemara asks the following Kasha, Umaishna min havadai di isuruhu, Safek nami isuruhu. Why are you telling me in this price according to Shimon that Beis Hill and Beis Shammai were only, were only uh, inhibited in the case of a vadai, but not in the case of a Safek? And we have a rule, Safek do raisa lechura. The Torah wants to be machmer even in a Safek. So if they were nimnu in a case of a vada, they should have been nimnu in a case of a suffix. So the Gemara answers. Low tamer, we shouldn't explain Rabbi Shimon. Minas suffix. That in a case of suffix isur, there was no inhibition because again, even in the case of suffix, we have a principle suffix the rice. Well, Ama. Let's rewrite the text of Rab Shimon and it should say, Lo nimnu mina stam. Stam means where we have no knowledge one way or the other. Maybe these women are asuros, according to the Sheet of Basil, according to the Sheet of Echamai, to Modi Lahu Parsh. We can rely on the fact that one school of thought would be Modiya to the other school of thought. The Gemara says, I mean, if you're going to say like that, Michael Mashmon, what's the Chiddush of Shimon? You're telling me that the Chiddush of Shimon, that they relied one on the other, and the reason for that is the Ava Vareus Nogim was there, meaning that they were careful that each one should notify the other that there's a possibility of a Kishalon, some sort of down, some sort of violation. It's Hainu Reishna. That's exactly what it says in the Reishna of the Brisa before Rabbi Shimon. Let's go back to the Brisa. The language of the Brisa is Lo Nimnu Milisa Beishamay Milisa Nashim. Why? Because I am Esvash Shalom Mehav. That Chiba Vareus Hanogavet. So certainly they would notify one of the other. So what did Rabbi Shimon change over here? What did he add? So the Gemara answers, Hakamash Balan, what's the Chiddush Rav Shimon? There is no Chiddush Rav Shimon. But the Kula Rav Shimon, the entire Brisa from beginning to the end is Rav Shimon. And the Brisa is telling us that because of the Av and the Reus, that's the reason why there was no inhibition because. They didn't have to be Choshish and Stam Noshim because they would rely on the fact that if there was any problem, any Havam, you know, a problem, then they would get the notification. They would be on WhatsApp. Toshma, the Yom Rabbi Yochum and Nuri, Hech Halacha Zu Ravachas Bi Yisrael. He says, How will this Halacha, in the case of Taurus Arayos, how are we going to be Kovea? In such a way that there shouldn't be a mikshal. Im nasa kibay chamai kibay chamai aflad mamzul kibay basila. We have no solution here, because if we're going to follow the footsteps of bechamai, then the child of a tzaras erva is a mamzul. 
So what are you going to tell me now? Nasa kid Well, we're in a no-win situation. Why? Because even if you'll tell me that we cannot allow a tsaris erva to get married through Yibam because we're choshesh for Beis Hillel, we still are not on the clear. Havlad Pogum Ladivre Beit Shamai. According to Beit Shamai, even though the Vlad is not a mamza because she got remarried to someone in Ashuk, this source ever without Chalitza, but nevertheless the child is called Pogum Lekahuna because of the violation of the law of Lotia Meis Achutzelishzar, and anyone that is born from a Bias Lav, a violation of an Isar Lav, even if he's not a mamzer, he's allowed to come into the call, nevertheless, he's mischala l'kuna. Like, for example, Almona, who got married to a coin gadol, she's not a basula. So the child is pogum l'kuna. So therefore, the Gemara is now proving that Beit Shammai also kidivreya. Why? Because in this statement of Rabbi Yochanan and Muri, he was worried, how could it be that we could allow Beit Hillel to marry into Beit Shammai, Beit Shammai, Beit Hillel, we have problems, whether it's a Mamzeris problem of Yisra Kol, whether it's a Pukum Kuhuna problem, and, and, and Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri was so impressed by this issue that he came to the conclusion, oh, Nesakin lehem litzoros, he will start, we're going to do it in a way that we can satisfy all the shitos. We're going to require chalitza, kishitas beit shamay. We're going to prohibit yibum, kishitas beit shilem. Lo ispiku ligmar sadov rachinichifash shah. Even though Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri's proposition was very logical and would cover all the bases, nevertheless, they never got a chance to implement Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. And all this proves that there is an issue of Asu Bichamai Kiddivreya. Because otherwise, why is Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri working day and night and doing somersaults into the air to work out a halachic ruling? And be Masaki and Takana that would satisfy both Basil and Beit Shammai. Unless you're assuming that Osu Beit Shammai could Devreya. And that seems to be the Gemara's final proof at this time. So, this we're going to stop for today, Mirz Hashem, here on the top of Tesvav. We're still a little bit ahead, Baruch Hashem, which is good. And I wish you a great day. Thank you so much.